Italy is the most powerful country on earth and I'm here to prove it. It's been a while since I've last played Italy and all of my usual shenanigans no longer work because they patched all the fun out of it. But to prove to Paradox that you can't patch all of the fun out, we'll be playing as Italy and grabbing as many achievements as we can today. So follow along, you might have some fun. Iron Man is on as well as historical AI focuses because I don't need any of that nonsense. So the first part of this video is going to be very fast paced. We have to do a couple of things on a very tight timing. Let's start with the basics. I'm going to open with Italian highways and I'm mostly going to focus on grabbing all of the 35 day focuses that give me military factories until such a time as I... God, there's a lot of panning. We can do this one, Servizione di Informazione Militare, Triumph in Africa, and then convene the Grand Council. As for our research, it's the usual opener for industry, bit of research, and then we can either grab artillery, which is fine, infantry equipment, also fine, but I prefer to grab the survivability studies because I will be going heavy on air this run. I really do like air. Construction. While this is very fast paced, I also like to just start with a slow sieve build up. Why? Because I'm greedy. I got that sieve greed. Then production the meat and potatoes let's start by these light tanks get rid of them don't want them they're useless i'm gonna make two factories on toy artillery we're gonna add one on trains because we will need some trains we're gonna grab two factories on transport planes we're gonna keep making transport planes until we have 60 of them extra factories can go here we'll want more support equipment naturally and we have some air that we need i'm gonna get rid of the close air support because it's interwar and i'm gonna put the rest of these factories into basic close air support on to the military we have an army here in northern ethiopia put them under a general and an army here in southern ethiopia also put them under a general that gives us a lot of extra troops here so for the troops we haven't assigned yet we're gonna take all the mountaineers assign them to the north and we're gonna take all of the armor assign them south and then just fill up the armies as you see fit we'll have two armies and a field marshal and we can get going now for the ethiopian war it's easy it's really easy you can just set a battle plan and it will win but i would like to win this within roughly 70 days just to make sure ethiopia doesn't do anything funky so what you want to do is concentrate attacks on weak positions and just keep attacking 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 if you see open tiles push units into them just grab as many victory points as you can and keep aggressively pushing forward then the navy we have a large navy but it's pretty much spread out all over the world so we're just going to group every everybody up in Squadra Navale, the first one, and just ignore it for now. Speaking of, I'm just going to assign all these productions to Squadra Navale so I don't have to worry about it. Let's buy some Iranian oil, rubber from Siam will do, and the chromium and tungsten, not that important. Occupy territories. The standard is now military governor. This is good, but expensive. Anywhere we have at least some compliance and anything over 30% compliance, just replace your military governor with local police force. It's cheap. It's easy. Don't have to worry about it. We're going to grab Servizione Informazione Militare as soon as we finish Army Primacy. What that does is it's going to give us an espionage agency, which we are going to need. Meanwhile, the war in Ethiopia is going very well. At the end of this, we want to have at least 10 army experience which we have and at least 10 air experience so draw the war out a little teeny tiny bit if you have to and there goes ethiopia a couple of guns mostly garbage now the easy thing here would be to simply annex everything but i don't want to create that world tension yes i'm looking at world tension because our timings are going to be tight what we're going to do instead and it's going to be much more beneficial to us is puppet ethiopia sure but do we really want to have one big ethiopia that might be dangerous no, no. What we're going to do is um, puppet all of these teeny tiny countries here to create as many little puppets as we can. That gives us a nice patchwork of teeny tiny puppets that will all do their focus trees, all give us factories and don't get in our way. There we go. Now we have a bunch of puppets in the area, but we can make it even better. We're going to go into occupied territories and we're going to return one province to the Ausa government we've just created. There we go. They get Afar back. And then we're also going to create the puppet of Eritrea and the puppet of the Ajuran Empire. Well, if you've created it in the peace deal, you can now just return territory to them. If you didn't release them, but released one of the other Ethiopian miners, you can create the puppet out of the uh, Horn of Italy. Oh, sorry, Horn of Africa. There we go. Now we don't have to actually 
actually garrison any of this, meaning we have much more equipment available to us. Now, while the army's traveling back home, we're going to reorganize them a bit. We're going to take all of these Camichinere, assign them to a separate army, as well as all of these Banda Irregulare, so all the Irregulars. We're going to separate them out. Combine them with the Camichinere, that gives you 14 divisions. These 14 divisions I usually just put under the command of Prince Adalberto. And I just set a fallback line over Trieste, the tile above Trieste. There, that'll do. We'll park them there for now. Then everything else, I am simply converting into Fanteria, basic infantry, and then we separate them out. So we have one full army of infantry, park those boys on the French border. We're gonna separate three units out of the other army, and we're gonna park them here on the tile below Ajaccio to prevent the French from walking into Sardinia. Wait, no, is this Sardinia? Yes, this is Sardinia. Give them any leader, Umberto will do, another prince. And the five guys we have left, we are going to put on the border with Austria. So I, I don't know if you're, if you're getting these vibes, but uh, we're gonna be playing very aggressively here. We're then gonna train a couple more divisions. We want to have about 15 units for the north here, so another 10 divisions are gonna be recruited, 10 basic infantry divisions. Yes, we don't have enough equipment. No, we won't have enough equipment. It's fine. We'll be fighting weaker powers anyway. The captain of industry might be a little controversial, but we will be building a lot of sieves so I, I think he's going to be worth it. All right, we got survivability studies. I'm not going to hold your hand and tell you what to research. What I recommend is going heavy on industry first, and then as war draws closer, which you'll pick up as you watch the video, is to get some infantry stuff, get a little bit of artillery stuff, and maybe, just maybe, look at getting these guys, medium armor, once it doesn't take 600 days. So, But what I'm going to research first are these guys, paratroopers. All right, we have this set of blah, whatever the f this is so we're gonna have this intelligence agency created for us for free gives us two spies the instant we get these spies unlocked deploy them in france start building a spy network we are going to get the spy network up to 50 percent in france as quickly as possible and do one collaboration government just time it as tight as you can just rush it trust me just rush it. All right, first spy. I recommend for your spies to pick the bottom three here, the named ones, the special ones. They seem to do better than the generic ones and just deploy them in northern France. All right, triumph in Africa done. And we want to convene the Grand Council, but we cannot. The balance of power, that hated thing is against us. It has to be dead center and it's currently leaning towards Mussolini. So we have to do something about that. We're going to slander the Duce going to criticize the war effort. Then we're going to question the loyalty of the army, air force, and navy. That's why we had that experience saved up. Having done that, El Duce is no longer that powerful and we can now convene the Grand Council. What this does is lead to a political advisor, Pietro da Carbo, I can't pronounce that, who gives us daily support for non-aligned. We want to get that guy as quickly as possible. We want to get non-aligned support ticking. Don't spend any of your political power after that though, because we're going to wait until July 1st. Oops, I was too fast. So, July 1st, just July 3rd, doesn't matter. We're now going to justify a war goal on Yugoslavia. And in 230 days, we're going to go to war. And we're going to draw on the French, the Czechs, and the Romanians. Trust me, we can handle it. All right, Grand Council convened. What we really want to do here is go to Monarchia d'Italia as quickly as possible. But we need more support for non-aligned. And I know what you're thinking. This one gives us 5% boost to non-aligned. I know, he's actually really good for 35 days but first before we even look at that one we need more factories we need a lot more factories so Fiocci Munizioni, Bereschia small arms whatever gives us quick access to military factories is what we're going to focus on I won't be holding your hand throughout the focus tree but but in general rush towards the political branch whenever you have a roadblock there prioritize factories, then prioritize army bonuses, then prioritize air bonuses. Well, maybe air first, army second. Depends on what you like, really. But I want factories now. Meanwhile, justification is going along nicely. We want to justify in early July, so we have the justification ready to declare before March of 37, before the end of March 37, because that is when France and I think Czechoslovakia remove their guarantee on Yugoslavia, and we want this to be a big war. 
the biggest. And with our next batch of PP, I'm grabbing Ugo, Caballero, Army Organization. All right, we've hit 50% on the network in France. We are immediately going to prepare a collaboration government. Commence when ready. Use both spies, then resume the mission. Into our recruit and deploy, we're going to move everything except garrisons down to medium again. And we're going to move operations up to high. We want to prioritize all equipment into that collaboration government. It's vital that it happens. Meanwhile, Spain still spaining along. Again, we're here for the army XP and the air XP. What we want to do before Mussolini disappears is still grab war economy. Ideally extensive conscription as well, but realistically we're not. We also would very much like to get Daniele, the industrial concern. It's good and it gets even better as we do the focus tree, but we will have to make choices. What I'm going to do with this 50 political power is do these anti-democratic raids. It's good for our stability. And as your dockyards finish building your big ships, uh, don't bother building anything new. This navy will suffice for the time being. Just build convoys. You're going to need a ton of convoys. Got air innovations. Uh, it's time to depose Mussolini. Just get this man out of here. We're also going to start work on the battlefield support doctrine, my favorite doctrine. It's probably not the best, but I like it. We also have the political power required to go up to war economy, and that is probably the last good thing Mussolini is going to do for this country. All right, we finished our justification. We're not going to declare it just yet. I'm going to explain what we're going to do first. We can declare on Yugoslavia at any time, as long as it's before March 30th, because then the Czechs and French pull out. We don't want that. We want to fight everyone. So we have... A a little more than a month before we actually declare. We have one full army on the French border. Their job is not to fight the French. Their job is to stand there and make sure the French don't walk into our country. We have this army of irregulars uh, bolstered with some troops I borrowed from my miners here who seem to have gotten themselves stuck. Hmm. Let's, let's grab these forces and pull them home. We have this army led by the prince who has all of our fodder, the garbage units, so the Camecinere, all the Banda Irregulare, and all of these irregular infantry we borrowed from our African puppets. We are going to park him on these two tiles, Trieste and the tile above Trieste on the Yugoslav border. We're going to let Fiume and the rest of Istria fall, same as Zara and all of Libya. It's irrelevant. We are not going to protect it. It does not matter. What that does is it's going to start taking this bar even more to the left, just to be on the safe side, because if this bar swings to the right again, Mussolini comes back, even if we've deposed him. So don't worry about losing a couple of cores, we'll be fine. That leaves us with these glorious paratroopers who are going to be on a mission here. What those guys are going to do is um, paratroop France. Yes, I know. I know it's cheesy. I don't usually do it, but give me something here. All right. They, they've made this an annoying strategy. going to be annoying right back. And that leaves the army on the Austrian border, who are quite obviously going to invade Austria. Now for the Air Force, we're going to take all of our fighters, put them in the airbase in Piedmonte and deploy them over southern France. Don't have any air in the Alpine region or in northern France. Ignore it. Completely ignore the air zones and the AI will do the same. The AI will not deploy fighters there, meaning we can paradrop. Don't, don't ask why, it's just how it works. All right, March 10th, we're going to declare this war. We're going to fight the French, the Czechs, the Romanians and the Yugoslavs, doesn't matter, don't call anybody in, don't want your puppets fighting here. And we are instantly going to justify a war goal on Austria next. Uh, what about Tyrol? It's going to take ooh, 215 days, no, 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 like an hour tick by, there we go, we're now fighting everybody, we justify now, it's 30 days, much better. So you want to be fighting France and that way you get a very cheap, a very fast justification. We are now going to wait 30 days before we cap the French. Don't launch these paradrops. Wait until we have declared our war on Austria, because we will be riding very close to the limit of world tension as we get this done. And we do not, absolutely do not want the UK to get involved. So if you timed everything as I have, you don't have to worry about the UK. Oh, that is so tight. All right, world tension is at 23%. It was 24 just now, but somebody guaranteed the independence of China and not the independence of Austria. So that's good. As you can tell, my timing was off by like two days. And it got a lot tighter than I would have liked. Whew. All right. Coincidentally, we finished our collaboration government. We're going to declare war on Austria. Not going to call anybody in. And we are now at war with pretty much 
all of our neighbors. Next step of the operation is to check. Do we have the collaboration government? Yes. Excellent. Meanwhile, let's quickly redeploy the spy to Austria so we can get some Austrian goodness. And now another deciding factor, the para drop. In theory, in theory and in practice as well. Orléans is free. Okay. Paris is free. And yeah, that's that's France gone. <laughs> was easier than... Uh, oh, exactly as planned. Sorry. Hurrah, the fall of Paris. So it's easy as that. Now we have a bunch of guns, bunch of equipment. Great. We're not going to annex anything. We are going to puppet France in France itself, Corsica, and all of North Africa. And everything else is going to be puppeted individually. So we're going to be satelliting a bunch of stuff here, like Tahiti. Add resource rights and add resource rights to everything and anything we just took. All of those puppets are going to be transferring all of their resources to us. But there's more. We're also going to add war reparations for the next five years, I think. These people are going to be transferring all of their factories, well, a lot of their factories, to us. So submit that demand as well. And then, when we've done everything else, now we can take the French Navy. So the army that was on the French border, just deploy them on the border with the Austrians. Keep maintaining a defensive line along the Yugoslav border as you take Australia, sorry, Austria, and just do not attack Yugoslavia. They are last. We will not capitulate Yugoslavia until we have taken the focus Monarchia d'Italia. So we can do that soon, air quotes, but not yet. Not yet. We need we need the balance of power to be um, on the left side. Now, in terms of doctrines, um, I don't like Grand Battle Plan. Sure, it works, but I recommend if you want to play an infantry-focused game, go with superior firepower. I'm going to go with tanks eventually, and I think I can pull it off. So I'm going to go Mobile Warfare, because the Italian tree is pretty well suited to Mobile Warfare with a couple of bonuses in there. But if you don't feel comfortable and you don't think your economy can handle making tanks, just go superior firepower. It's always good. Now, I just realized I may not have properly explained why we're not annexing anything. The reason we didn't annex France or any of that other territory is the balance of power mechanics. You saw how much it already shifted, just capitulating the French. Actually annexing territory, any territory, will move the balance of power more and more to the right. And it will keep doing that until we've done the popery thing so we will avoid annexing anything until we're all poked out all right monarchia d'italia is available so we're gonna rush that so we can get more monarchy support then we'll need to wait until 50 percent but it should be too much longer and i think you can tell with a little bit of micro um <laughs> the austrians have already been defeated now the goal here is to make it to the border with czechoslovakia before austria capitulates ideally it just makes everything easier because when we arrive here the czechs won't have any troops on that border because they don't consider it to be a dangerous border just yet. And that's great because that border is riddled with forts level five and up. I think they can go up to level seven at times. Get there before the Czech troops do. Now you can walk into their fort line and use it yourself. Otherwise, you're going to have to use annoying methods to go through southern Slovakia, which is super narrow and has a river crossing, but at least it doesn't have a fort. Ah, so we've reached the Czech border. We've managed to take one of their forts. The more forts we can take, the better. And even better if we can take territory that doesn't even have forts. So I'm just snaking past the Czech troops where I can to get to positions that are advantageous to me. Like here, making my way to Br Brno. Maybe push through to Bratislava there. All right, now to just knock out Vienna. And there goes Austria. Again, we are just going to puppet them and then take all of their resources and factories. And now we just keep knocking on Czechoslovakia's door. They're not... Well, they are strong in that they have quite a few troops, factories, and forts, but they're no match for us. We're also going to redeploy the air over Czechoslovakia. We're just going to bomb them into oblivion. And our cast is doing a lot of good work here. The reason we got all those fighters is to clear the skies, just overpower the enemy air force, and then our cast and tank will do the rest. And once we get a nice stockpile of artillery, we're also going to add artillery to the mix, but you can tell I'm I'm already short some, so as long as I don't need it to advance, I'm not going to do it. And meanwhile, just keep pushing further and further into Czechoslovakia. Right, we now have Monarchia d'Italia. Vittorio Emanuele is now our king. Hurrah, we are now non-aligned, which comes with a couple of downsides, a couple of upsides. It eh, doesn't really matter. We're now going to keep an eye on our non-aligned supports. We need to get it to 50 so we can do power to the king 
and rush down papal support, strengthen the papacy, etc. I want to get there as quickly as possible. And there goes Czechoslovakia, a bunch of free stuff. Again, simply puppet everything. And then we're going to take some more war reparations and all of their resources. All right, so the entire Romanian army is already here. So I'm going to cancel this move order. This is not going to work. Uh, there's simply no supply and it's too narrow. It's terrible terrain. Won't work, trust me. We have other options. We're going to take the entire army. And we're going to take a fallback line around Zilna like this and down here. So we will leave the tile of Zilna and the tile below Zilna open. This is going to cause the AI to want to pour troops in here. They will get that supply hub. They will get nice juicy supply and think they can take us. Well, they might be able to take us, but they'd be wrong. What we're going to do then is close the jaws. Once there's a couple of units in these two tiles, we're going to attack down from this tile into this tile and from this tile here into that tile and essentially create a pocket. We're gonna cut them off. So we're gonna make sure they walk in here then close the jaws. If we've destroyed about 10, 15 divisions, we should have destroyed enough of their army to be able to push on without really any concern. All right, so it may have been a little costly, but we have created the breakthrough here we want it. Uh, it's not a huge pocket, that's eight divisions. Well, it's better than no divisions, so we're just going to uh, crush this pocket and then set up again. This is a little on the expensive side. You can get lucky, get 12 divisions in there, you get unlucky and get less than 10. It's better than getting no divisions, I suppose. All right, at this point, it's probably best to set up again. Or if you notice the uh, the Romanian army is kind of weak, you can now uh, push your advantage. I'm going to try pushing because I very much like this to be over. It's always safer, though, to uh, make sure the enemy is actually well and truly defeated before you do. But I think I can take him. And the AI just loves to spam last stand. It's one of the most annoying things about this game. Uh, still, uh, though, it looks like we'll be able to grab a good chunk of their army here. Not perfect, but good enough. Yeah, I think that's most of the Romanian army gone. Oh yeah, that definitely is. Well, those are horrendous casualties. I have like 10 divisions left. And if you get the opportunity to uh, casually snake your way into Yugoslavia, you'd be stupid not to, really. I'm also going to prepare an offensive from the north of Yugoslavia, because they're going to be super weak now. We're going to grind Yugoslavia into dust next. And that's Romania out of the picture. Don't balkanize Romania. It's funny, but just don't bother. It makes it a lot more difficult to integrate them later. Again, Puppet, the Kingdom of Romania, and stack resource rights and stack whatever the other thing is. War reparations, that's the one. All right, we've researched basic medium tanks, so let's start producing them. Uh, my usual design is the three-man turret. Early game, slap on the close support gun until we get the medium cannon. Christie suspension. Ooh, riveted armor, really? Eh, riveted armor for now. I'll switch to welded when I've unlocked it. And radio, sloped armor, and a couple of additional machine guns. I'm just really annoyed. Anyway, we're almost done here. So Yugoslavia is going to fall over any day now. Yugoslavia is dead and buried. We still have all the things we need. Do not, and I repeat, do not balkanize Yugoslavia. Yes, it gets you more factories, but it makes things so much more annoying later on. Just puppet them. And we've now conquered pretty much all of the Balkans and the the balance of power is right where we want it. I'm also going to put my spies on Germany because believe it or not, Germany is our next target. We are going to wait for Germany to go to war with Poland. In anticipation of that, we are going to drop a guarantee of independence as soon as we can or by the time Danzigo war is close so we can get drawn into that war. We're not going to join any factions, but we're going to make use of that opportunity to quickly knock out Germany, remove a competitor on the European continent and get a big juicy puppet out of the deal. Our forces combined with Poland's forces and the allies really means that Germany doesn't stand a chance. We're going to make medium tanks, mediums, mediums, mediums. I'm going to bring this up to like roughly 30 combat with and keeping organization around 30, 35 ish. When over the course of your build up, you start running out of build slots at home, I recommend you start building military factories in the countries we will need to be annexing soon. Well, in a couple of years. So build in France, build in Yugoslavia, build wherever really, just to force their autonomy down so they will be easier to integrate later on. Plus, you get a portion of these factories anyway. All right, eventually Germany is going to come in and ask for the Sudetenland. You can fight them for it, but personally, there's no point. Just give them the Sudetenland 
will take it right back from them in a couple of years. Well, in, in less than a year, actually. So they can enjoy the Sudetenland while it lasts. Yes, it's going to gut our Italian Czechoslovakia and it's going to look horrible. It's temporary. All right, we have our papal support. It means the balance of power has changed once again. On one side, his holiness. On the other side, the king. We want to move the bar as far left as we can, over 60%. To do that, we have a couple of options. First off, we are going to expand the Lateran Treaty. A little bit of political power to do that. And of course, we're going to continue down this path. This is going to move the bar a little bit more, strengthen the papacy, moves the bar a little bit more and unlocks liturgical reforms. And then we disband the black shirt, which moves the bar a little bit more. Oh no, the bar doesn't actually move, but it gives us a decision which will allow the bar to move a little bit more. Considering we have a spy network in Germany, I'm going to prepare a collaboration government. I hope it prepares in time. Eh, it should. All right, we've strengthened the papacy. Now to disband the black shirts. That gave us access to another decision here, liturgical reform. This is the key one. This one has a 365 day timer. So you click it, the bar moves to the, le to the left, you get some stability. But in one year's time, you can click it again. It's important because if you've done every focus in the focus tree correctly and you've clicked all the decisions once, the bar here is going to top out just at 60% and you need it to be just over 60 to 60% to get the Pope's ascendancy. So the key here, and that is what a lot of people keep asking on the Reddit and on the forum. So how do I get the Pope? The bar stops moving. Wait 365 days and click liturgical reforms again. There we go. Germany is justifying against us. We have the army we need. Took a little longer than I would have liked. So I'm going to exercise everyone a little bit longer we have until Germany finishes Danzig or war so about 70 days maybe 35 I keep forgetting how long it is but we have a little bit of time we're gonna have a little bit more exercising we're gonna put up air over Czechoslovakia as well as get an army to garrison the front lines of Czechoslovakia because Germany will attack the Czechs they have a war goal on it that for some reason they're not using but they will once we come in and help Poland we're also going to call our French puppet into the war and we are going to walk into Germany through the Rhineland so we're just going to push out of France and cap Germany from the left we have plenty of troops available to do it we have also managed to deploy a couple of tank divisions we've got a couple more in the queue all in all I'm thinking we are more than ready for this as expected Germany is going to declare war on Poland Poland's guaranteed by the allies so the allies are going to get drawn in Poland joins the allies and we are also going to be drawn in so we can also join this war but we will not join the allies despite the uk asking don't want that now take our national focuses and grab super secreto we're also going to justify on franco here pick catalonia eastern aragon doesn't really matter just don't take the islas baleares so we're going to justify on franco franco can do two things every game he either stays non-aligned which is a bit annoying or he goes fascist if he's fascist no problem he will not pick up any guarantees you can just declare on him next eat him he'll be done. If he stays non-aligned, chances are very likely that the UK is going to drop a little bit of a guarantee there. That's also not a problem. That just means Spain is going to be our ticket to fighting the Allies instead of justifying on Greece or manually justifying on Poland or the United Kingdom afterwards. It, again, doesn't matter. So let's take that into account. The reason I'm not justifying on the Balearic Islands is because I want to be Mimi and grab the Balearic Islands off him, which he will give us because we helped him out in the Spanish Civil War. It's just, ah, it's brilliant. Again, don't join the Allies. Don't sign any non-aggression pacts. Just ignore the UK. My spies, I'm going to park over the United Kingdom from now on. Don't really Really need them in uh, Germany anymore. It's nice for your advance, but it's not required. Spain has picked up its UK guarantee. No problem there. Super Ejercito is in. Super Aereo. And I think that's going to be it because Germany is not going to be around for all that much longer. Their army is useless. Their economy is less than useless. It's just Germany is so weak if they can't get Austria and Czechoslovakia for free. They're just so weak. And Italian tanks storming Berlin as it should be. Peace steel, bunch of free stuff. Right, so we're fighting Poland in this. Trust me, Poland never has enough points to really make this count. So we're going to do the same as we did before. Until we have the Pope in power, we're not annexing anything. Puppet Germany and grab all of their factories and resources and ships. Italian Germany with a very large amount of factories coming our way and 
a small slice of navy. Now this navy we are going to take and we're going to park them in Brest. Just so they're not cut in, uh, cut off in the Mediterranean when we fight the British and the rest of the Allies. The entire army is going to be parked on the border with Spain. So Spain knows what's coming to them. And Stalin is also going to go to war with the Allies soon. So he always justifies on Poland the moment Germany declares. So give it another 60 days. Hey, Spain gives up the Balearics as always all right justification's done and we can declare war now might as well doesn't really matter oh luxembourg's here we can now join the common turn i recommend you do this uh, it has two main advantages one they won't demand bessarabia which is great so we don't have to recapture it later and two it allows us to beep, 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 save 35 days by bypassing pact of steel since germany is now in our faction well in a faction with us and germany is also the same ideology as us that allows us to bypass and hurrah spain is overwhelmed uh we'll leave enough troops there to clean up gonna take one army march them over to cherbourg and start preparing naval invasion it's been a year we can click liturgical reforms again and the man with the hat is gonna join us god wills it behold Papa Pio. And naval invasion is off. Excellent. Also, our air power is absurd. One, we have a lot of airplanes. And two, they're so high quality. It just blow anything they have out of the water. And as expected, nobody's really home in the UK. They have all of their troops in the colonies in North Africa. Just everywhere trying to fight me. It's not going to go well for you boys. Now, the goal here will be to be a bit cheesy about it. We can take every single tile of the home islands. Except for Scapa Flow. So this northernmost tip and London itself. So we can encircle the capital and take the rest of the islands. And then we can capitulate the UK at will. Till then, let's just make sure we take as much land here as possible. And the papacy is now reborn. The papal state. Beautiful, isn't it? Love the flag. Love the leader. Love the color. Yeah, let's grab Italian irredentism. Work our way towards the Turkish war goal. And the Greeks are on their way to being involved as well. And Greece has declared war on Albania. Albania calls for aid, which we should shall give. Greece is now at war with us and Albania and Greece will soon find yep Greece is now in the allies that means this is gonna be one fun party let's just get this over with we're gonna capitulate the UK. Italian armor storms London there we go the peace deal at last. Now this peace deal is pretty big one it's also the most annoying one Neil face we have a couple of priorities in this one three main priorities. One, get occupation and control of all Mediterranean territory. That means Spain, that means Greece, it means Egypt and the UK's islands in the Mediterranean. Two, get control of Canada. Canada will allow us to then take out the United States with impunity. Get the resource-rich East Indies. Uh, the Dutch East Indies aren't involved. If they were, that would be great, but they're not, so eh, I'm not gonna worry about it. And with that, we have a pretty disgusting peace deal. So we managed to puppet Canada. Great. We managed to take all of the Mediterranean land we needed, as well as a portion of India, Burma, Bangladesh, and Italian Malaya. So all in all, not a terrible peace deal. And at this point, it's also a good time to be um, leaving the common turn. We have no more business with you, Mr. Stalin. And as for spies, well, I, I think it's pretty obvious that at this point, what we really want is collaboration governments in the uh, Soviet Union. So that is going to be our main priority. Infiltrate them and get their ciphers. Hey, Albania yields as expected. So next up, claims on Turkey. And then we'll turn towards Mare Nostrum after. Turkey requests light tanks. Uh, no? Because I've now got claims on Turkey. So we're just going to declare war. Nobody's guaranteeing them. Nobody's going to come to help. Declare war. I am going to call the French in just so I can walk through their territory. At this point, the Turkish military, or really any military, no longer stands a chance against us. And there goes Turkey, simply annex everything. i have also finished our war goal on Portugal. Might as well humiliate them. I work towards the annexations. I'm gonna grab the French first, and then we'll integrate Yugoslavia. Look at that. 
big old people state. And we have Mare Nostrum, just need the political power to integrate Yugoslavia and we'll have all the territory we need. Now for focuses, pick whatever. Plenty of great options still available or pick nothing. That will just allow you to get more political power more quickly. That's exactly what I'm going to do. And we can now gobble up Yugoslavia as well. Click that button. Beautiful papal state. Isn't she wonderful? But she can get even better. We can now press the Mare Nostrum button. A lot of manpower, a lot of extra factories, and a whole lot less stuff to garrison. So click that button and it's where the fun begins. <laughs> Regnum Romanum. And a whole lot more buttons to press to get even more course. We're also justifying on the Soviets, so they are going to be destroyed. So I don't really need to take focuses now. We're strong enough as it is. There we have it. Justification is complete. Now the war with the Soviets at this point is a foregone conclusion. This isn't complicated. This isn't rocket surgery. It's just declaring war and setting the machinery of war to work. Call in the Romanians, mostly because you need access to their territory, but you don't really need to call in anyone else. And you simply grind the Soviets Soviets into the dust as you build more collaboration governments because without collaboration governments you have to walk like here around the O of the Soviets it's it's a very long walk let's say what I do want to try here is be extremely memey <laughs> oh boy and cut off as many Soviet divisions as I can and create massive pockets just to keep myself entertained. I was kind of hoping to rush towards the Königsberg uh, front and use that as a, a linchpin for a gigantic, ginormous pocket, but I don't think that's going to be realistic. <laughs> I can't believe it. That meme worked. I just cut off the entire Soviet army in Poland. So uh, I guess we'll use the tanks to drive into Poland and just crush this big old Soviet pocket and the infantry can keep grinding with my, I was going to say unchallenged air power, but yeah, we're, we're shooting down a whole lot more Soviet planes than they'll ever be able to shoot down. Yeah, we have dominance and in the sky, on the water, on land, uh, there's, there's nothing the Soviets can do. I am going to grind them into dust, really. And with the Soviets on the brink, really, we're going to deploy our remaining spies now on the good old US of A. They are the final piece left to fall. Soviets are eh, very close to capitulation. Oh, there go the Soviets. And now it's just a matter of gobbling up what we need. What we need is... Where's Moscow? It's always a nightmare finding all these places. Anyway, want to annex as much stuff as we can. Want to prioritize on Moscow because Moscow was required for the achievements. And of course, we're going to take as much land here as we can because we can core all of this delicious and the nutritious land. Unfortunately, instantly after that peace deal, Japan declared war on us and I clicked the wrong button and all of my puppets now are now also involved. Doesn't matter, Japan is very, very far away. I'm going to focus my army on the good old US of A. I am going to have my tanks thundering down to New York and Washington soon enough. And the Navy is large enough that it doesn't really need to worry about, well, anything really. The USA is naval invaded Tokyo, so I don't have to really worry about Japan much. But let's instead worry about the US of A. They're the last thing I need to kill. 10 days and I have two full army groups on their borders. The USA is highly distracted and well I, I hate to say it but I really don't think the US Navy is really ready to go toe to toe with my 1000 ship Navy. Alright justification on the USA is done. We're just gonna declare war. We're not gonna call any allies into this fight. Don't need them. We're just gonna overwhelm them. Them. They're out of position, and even if they weren't, there's just nothing they can do about us at this point. Let's call the Canadians in, because I'm gonna need to, and just destroy the United- Oh, God. Yeah, um, we're gonna destroy the United States of America, quite easily, in fact. Never mess with the Pope. Oh, Mr. Roosevelt, you're trying, but it's not gonna do you much good. Damn, a million and a half casualties in defense of the homeland, but I am bleeding, men. Alright, so I'll give it to the Americans. They are resilient, but they are dead nonetheless. About the fall, <laughs> even though they've been walking out of Alaska for the last couple of months. And there goes the US at last. Like I said, resilient bastards. What do we need here? I think we need Hawaii. Right, so we need Hawaii, Illinois, and New York just to control them. So I technically, I guess, we, we got it with the peace deal, but I'm gonna grab Hawaii here just to be safe. Where's Illinois? Is this Illinois? Where's Illinois? Shil uh, Shilinois. And New York. New York, there we go. And I'll just 
puppet the US anywhere else. I really don't want to occupy all that garbage. And that is all our achievements done. All we have to do now is let the game run until 1945, which I'm not going to do, I think. All we have to do is annex Italian Austria and let the game run to 1945 and we get the achievement. Anyway, we're going to end it here, mostly because I'm not really interested in playing this until 1944, but I think you guys get the gist of it. I hope this video can teach you how to still play Italy in a fun way and after this you never have to play Italy again. So everybody wins. Anyway, hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you enjoy this next video too. See ya.